Okay, so that's now our super new, great, fantastic UI. Okay, amazing. It's very simple, but it looks a whole lot better than the old toolkit stuff. But there's a lot more, as I say, we can do. So, for example, we can take all our existing code that we wrote donkeys years ago, that's in our object library, and we're going to move it then and build it into a native .NET assembly. Once we have got the code available for Synergy.net, we can then create a native .NET application which utilizes it. So we're not going through the .NET API and all that kind of stuff. And basically that's going to be the, the basis for our, the final two sessions. And the final two sessions are pretty short, or the two exercises. The first exercise, we're going to take our existing code and build a native .NET assembly. The fact that it's Synergy language is immaterial. Okay? What comes out at the other end is exactly the same as if you'd written it in VB.NET or C Sharp or any other .NET language. The fact that it's Synergy code means nothing. But obviously we are going to use and be using Synergy.NET and just like traditional Synergy, we're able to build everything through the Visual Studio. So to build the native Windows.NET assembly, we're going to utilize the same existing code. We're not going to make any code changes because it's all been written, built and tested in our object library. Now remember our old programs didn't link against our object library, they linked against the ELB and the ELB was built from the object library but it's where the code it resides that we need to be worried about or concerned about or knowledgeable of. So as I said, the executable was built directly from the object library but it's the object library that resides and holds all our code. Now one thing that is important that we have to remember is when we reference code we want to make sure that we reference it and not add it into our project. If we right click and add existing item, which we've done for all the other projects and everything we've done so far, what that'll do is take a copy of it and move a copy of the source file into our .NET assembly project folder. We don't want that because we really don't want the same source file in two locations. We want to keep it in one location. So what we can do with a Synergy project is add a reference an existing item. So you don't add, you add a referencing to an existing item. And that allows the existing item to stay where it is, the source file, but your project can then build as though it's all inside that project. The build system will know exactly where to find it. So you've got a single source file, continue to have a single source file under source control folders and all that kind of stuff. But you can build it into one or more multiple projects. And if you look closely, you can see in the properties for the file that the full path will be the on vinyl object library. It won't be our whatever we call the next project folder. Now, Synergy.net equals no toolkit. Because mm. that's a set of Synergy routines that we wrote 35 billion years ago for menuing, windowing, environmental support. Um, the UI toolkit designed on cell-based systems and it was ported to Windows many, many years ago. Yeah, it looks a bit dated today. You do have to remember that we're going back to work group 311 days when the toolkit was first ported to Windows. So in its day, it was very good. Obviously, it's not pretty good anymore. But there are routines that are still valid in today's .NET world. So, for example, you opening files. If you're still using you open to open your files, then having a uopen in a .NET assembly toolkit library is very valid. You can run a toolkit application in Synergy.net. You certainly wouldn't want to because it doesn't look anything like, it's sort of a hybrid, it's, it's a cross between bits of cell-based and bits of Windows. You'll get a Windows menu and a cell-based input form that doesn't have mouse control and no buttons and all this kind of stuff. It's a real mismatch and it was never, you know, we were never going to port it to the .NET environment. But we need a few routines to do various opens and various things like that. We're not going to do anything UI toolkit related in the UI. We're going to write something new or you're going to be given something new. But just like a standard assembly, we can reference it. So we can make a reference to the Synergex, Synergy DE, TKLib assembly because that's been built using the Synergy .NET compiler into a standard .NET assembly. The fact it comes from Synergy code as opposed to C-sharp is immaterial. Data definitions, right at the very start of the day at 9 o'clock this morning, if you can remember back that far, we talked about the repository, we created a repository and we put our definitions in there. The repository project is part of the traditional suite of projects, 
That doesn't mean it's restricted to traditional development. Our Synergy.net assembly project can still reference the repository. So our data definitions and all the good stuff we've built into that is still valid in the .NET world. We just need to reference our on vinyl repository or repository one on vinyl repository, if you named it like that, project. Okay? So in theory, we can just reference the repository and everything will build. Remember common properties. This is where we put our environment variables. The same common properties that we've set up for all our traditional thus far projects, like our object library project and our executable library project and our mainline project, those common properties still propagate into our other Synergy.net projects. Okay? So just like the repository project, we can reference these common properties from all our Synergy and Synergy.net projects. And remember, these allow us to provide solution-wide environment variables, not project-wide, but solution environment variables. So variables like the on vinyl ink that tell the compiler where to find include files, it's ideal that for our assembly projects go into the, these properties so we can build the existing code natively in .NET assemblies. So, the penultimate exercise. This one will be real quick, and the next one will be real quick. I'm um, going to create a Synergy.NET class library and reference all our existing code. Then you're going to add some new references or additional references to make sure that that library builds. It's a short exercise. There's no requirements to download anything because you have everything already. You have the code from this morning. 